Brendan from Nine Spokes. Hi. Welcome to the Startup Fan. Thank you very much. You've come a long way. I have, feeling it, <laughs> feeling good. Yeah. yeah. You'd, well, you wouldn't tell, you're just off a 24 hour flight not so long ago. Yeah, it feels like I've been off a 24 hour flight. Yeah, <laughs> landed yesterday, but I'm um, feeling good. Good day today. Yeah, how's the summer gone? Um, it's been good. We had, uh, today was about accountants, and yeah. um, so we're really only starting to give uh, them our first you know, first glance at our products. We've only been in market for a few months. Okay. So um, it's pretty new to most of those guys. Um, and so far, really, really good feedback. We should probably explain exactly what it is you do. Yeah. Line spokes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we're, we're pretty new. We've, the company's been around for a little while, but we only launched um, to the market um, at the end of last year, last calendar year. Okay. Um, when I say we've been around for a while, the concept was born about five years ago. Um, yeah. We only started building it maybe two or three years ago launched it at the end of last year. And what it is, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a free dashboard for small to medium business owners. And they can come in and sign up and get this uh, Nine Spokes dashboard. Um, and then they plug in the various apps that they're using to run their business with. So their accounting, their payroll, point of sale, yeah. um, inventory, whatever they're using. Um, and as they plug them in, we extract all the key data from the various applications and um, put it into one dashboard. So that small business owner can see how their business is performing in real time. Interesting. So all their financial metrics, all their non-financial metrics as well, which is really mm. important. So also all their leading indicators. And then that small business owner can share that dashboard with their accountants. And so they kind of can look and say, all right, let's, I can see what's happening in your finances, yeah. but I can also see what's, what's leading to that. So what's causing um, the issues or, or, or the growth and, and can start to move, the accountants can move out of the rear view mirror accounting space into the advisory space. Um, so Very that's what cool. we're doing. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. And to have that easy fit, because the, the data's there, but it's just not easily yeah. accessible. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've got to know how to get into the apps and go and find all the right metrics. And yeah. uh, there's really good apps out there, but lots and lots of data. Which are the right ones to measure your small business by? Okay. And, and our cu we, we, we build it by vertical. So if you're a retailer, for example, what, what it looks like to be successful in retail the metrics to measure yourself by are slightly different to what they would be if you're in um, professional services or if you're in hospitality or if you're in agriculture. So our dashboard changes. So when you sign up as a, as a retailer, you get retail metrics and then yeah. you go into the app store and you get retail apps. Mm. But if you sign up as a professional services, you'll get professional services metrics on the dashboard and then the app store will show professional services apps. So it pulls out slightly different data depending on what the, um, what the, the type of business you are. And how long are you guys going? Um, so the, the, the idea came up five years ago. Okay. Um, we tested the idea for a first um, maybe a year or two and then started building um, a proof of concept out. Right, um, okay. One of our first partners was uh, Deloitte in Australia. Um, big company. Big company, yeah, yeah. They liked what we were doing and they started helping us out and wanted to use our product to get it into um, to their small business customers. Okay. Um, but then we did a, we built out a, a version two, and that was what last year was all about. And at the end of last year, we launched um, in the UK. So wow. even though we're, we're we're based in New Zealand, our product went live in the UK directly under our own brand. Yeah. Um, but then Deloitte UK launched it under a brand called Propel. So if you look at Propel by Deloitte, okay. Um, that dashboard is is powered by Nine Spokes, and then Barclays have gone live as well in the UK. What was it like uh, launching in the UK? Well, it's great. We've got a good UK team um, yeah. and we'd always intended on being global from day one. So um, for us, our, our, our business is based on, on high volume and, and scale. So we wanted yeah. to go to a scale market and the UK was as, as, you know, as similar to New Zealand and, um, and Australia, but obviously a lot more volume here. So we yeah. wanted to launch here first. It's, um, it's, it's funny you actually say that from day one you wanted to go global. You know, we were only having a conversation earlier on today about yeah. startups need to be thinking global from day one, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's possible to do that now, obviously with the Internet of Things and the Internet being out there, that local is global, yeah. or global is local, I should say, Absolutely. you know, because it's so much easier to, to scale at that size. Especially tech companies and, and, and you know, software companies, you, um, there's definitely... It's definitely valid to test locally and, and prove your, your product works before yeah. you scale, but you're right, you have to be thinking global from day one. You have to, you don't, don't introduce any blockers into your business by, by thinking small and, and yeah. um, you know, executing locally only. For, for any, for any uh, companies out there that, that are starting off, right, that aren't maybe thinking global, 
what advice would you give them about thinking global or thinking big or, or in your case, what, what way do you guys do it? Well, I think for us, um, you know, we, we chose a, a certain path, which was to launch directly under our own brand, but also to go to market through channel partners. Yeah. And I think we learned, um, we learned how we, we, we prepared ourselves for the launching of the channel partners, but it's always harder than what you think it's going to be. Yeah. And, um, and part of launching with channel partners was partnering with big businesses that have lots of SME customers. And that was our thinking there. So okay. for the likes of, of Barclays as a bank or Deloitte, um, and they have lots of customers. Mm. But when you partner as a startup with a big corporate like that, no matter how much they these corporates like you yeah um you know it's hard they yeah, move at their pace they work the way they work the decisions they make are, but you know they, they're fantastic partners and they and they're adding lots of value and 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 good for the customers um it's and the partnerships are great but it's yeah. it's it, it's definitely a harder journey mm. than doing your own thing so you know i think it's about what's right for your business if you've got your own thing get out there launch test it and, and but definitely think global straight away um, if you've got a partnership strategy, it's also making sure that you, you've, you've done the thinking and you've got the right people to partner with corporates. Yeah. Good piece of advice. Yeah, really Look, Brendan, you're here in London for the next couple of weeks for the UK and, and a safe home to New Zealand that we'll be keeping an eye on nine spokes. And thank you so much for getting into the startup fan. No problem. Thank you very yeah. much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.